So I just got back from the hospital welcoming my firstborn son in the world. And when I was 10 years old, I played Halo 3 every single day, like 14 years ago. And now as an adult, I'm making a living making Halo content, which is just crazy. Like it's absolutely surreal. And not to mention, we just passed up 4K subs. Thanks to each and every one of you. And I just want to thank y'all from the bottom of my heart. It is a dream come true. I really, really appreciate it. I mean, it just means a lot. But in this video, there's a lot we got to talk about. We got to talk about controller versus mouse and keyboard because people are losing their minds we got to talk about hackers you know actually being in the game already and all the problems they're bringing we got to talk about people just throwing the game like they're just throwing games left and right and the fact that there's no armor in the campaign has 343 lost their minds there's just tons we got to cover so we're gonna break it all down as usual please smash the like subscribe but let's waste no more time and jump right into the news now i'm sorry you've seen the clips from xqc look how bro aim assist is it's Degenerate. I'm not. Oh my god! Oh my. Oh my god! Look! To Nick Merckx, and the list goes on and on. People complaining about the controller versus mouse and keyboard debate. People talking about aim assist and is it too strong? And I'm not gonna get too in depth here because I wanna make a completely separate video talking about this, but there are several pieces to this puzzle. First off, we gotta talk about controller on console and controller on PC. Right now, the aim assist values are the same and a lot of people think they should be different. In my opinion, I think it makes sense to have them split and here's why. A person that is on a PC, like a roided out 3090 crazy refresh rate monitor with a controller is going to have a natural advantage over someone on a console console with a controller. So I think it's only right that there is a decrease in the amount of aim assist between PC controller and console controller, because if you put them in the same competitive queue, I'm not talking about crossplay, I'm talking about controller only, then all of the top ranks are going to be dominated only by people that can afford a tricked out PC with a controller. I don't think that that's really fair, but I want to hear your opinion about that down below. Now, there's another debate talking about aim assist just being too strong in general, and I don't really agree with that at all. I'm a mouse and keyboard player. I'm pretty close to the Onyx level in the crossplay where I'm playing against console. And while aim assist is strong, I don't think that it can replicate like 90% of what you could do on a mouse and key. Like, I've been shot in the back and I've 180 and shot people. You can't do that on a console. And I'm gonna be honest, I'm just kind of tired of mouse and keyboard players just blaming all their deaths on controller. And this goes double for mouse and keyboard players up against controller players on console. It's not really that big of a deal. If you as a mouse and keyboard player develop your aim to a certain level, you're gonna be able to hit the same shots and you're gonna have all the advantages that you get only with all of the movement capabilities of a freaking mouse. But this is talking more from a high level that doesn't necessarily mean that it is balanced for the mid tiers of ranks you got to understand that console has a higher floor and probably a lower ceiling while mouse and keyboard like the floor is like freaking astronomically low i mean just look at my editor's gameplay from the first pop-off that we had on this channel where every single one of you in the comments roasted me because he thought it was my footage when it was his that's the floor with you know <laughs> He's probably gonna be so mad that I'm putting this in here. Um, yeah, okay, all right. But I'm not entirely sure what that floor should be. What the floor should be, what the ceiling should be, how balanced should it be? Is it balanced for the mid ranks? Does it matter? Should it be balanced from the top down? There's a lot of questions involved. This is a really complicated issue. But in general, as someone who has been playing at pretty high level, I'm comfortable with how things go. But we're gonna have to wait and see. It's an ongoing development and maybe all the high ranks will eventually be filled with controller players on PC or, you know, maybe even controller players on console. I don't really know, but I don't think so. But I wanna hear your opinion about all this down below. And like I said, I wanna be doing a really big in-depth controller versus mouse and keyboard video where I literally go into the practice range and we test a lot of things with controller and mouse and keyboard and how good the aim assist is and I'm really certain that there are ways to break the aim assist and abuse it with certain abilities like thrusters and things like that so there's a lot we got to talk about and I'm gonna save it for another video but I really want to just kind of break the ice here and ask y'all the question how do you feel about it is it too strong what's your rank what's your experience let me know down below now the next thing that we got to talk about is freaking hackers I'm gonna play a clip of hackers that have actually been already discovered in the freaking game and then we're gonna talk about it let's roll the clip right now and we're gonna talk about it afterwards I saw a clip like right here. Perfect. Yo, this shit's wild. Uh, uh, come on. Wow. Oh, uh, oh, uh, oh. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> no. Oh, 
<laughs> <You> flick. <laughs> Now, this is what your average mouse and keyboard player thinks aim assist does. All right, okay, I'm gonna stop, I'm gonna stop. I'm a mouse and keyboard player too. Okay, I'm, just, I'm sorry, this is a... <laughs> All right, moving on, freaking hackers are already hacking in Halo, and that is really, really bad. It's happening already, and I pretty much knew it was going to, but here's the problem. We've been dealing with this problem in gaming, especially eSport-oriented gaming forever. It was a huge problem that basically destroyed Warzone. In Overwatch, it was a problem that was never fixed. And really, Apex did a decent job, but Valorant is the first game that has taken freaking the hacker problem serious. And I don't necessarily know if 343 is going to do the same thing. I know that they're not doing a Vanguard-based program or a Root Kernel program, and really, I'm not sure if they're gonna be able to deal with the hacker problem as well as Valorant has dealt with theirs. Really, hacking is one of the things that can completely break the esports of a game if it's not dealt with, and it's really an ongoing battle. The more popular a game is, the more money there is for hackers to create hack programs or aimbot programs for people, and the only way to deal with that is an eager response in money and resources by 343 themselves. They have to take the problem seriously. They have to invest a lot of money into the problem, because if they ever stop pouring money into the problem, then the hackers win, and they're gonna keep winning, and people are gonna keep hacking and then the rank system sucks, the esports never grows, the game dies from a competitive point of view. So it's just really important and I hope that they nip all of this in the bud. We're gonna have to wait and see how this develops and I'm really hoping that 343 nail this because it's scary seeing hackers already, I'm gonna be honest. And the next thing that we gotta talk about is a really big ongoing issue and it blew up on Reddit and if you see this screenshot, it said, win or lose, I still get 50 XP. And the title of this was, issue with the current challenge system. Now, the top comment basically summed this up perfectly, so I'm gonna read it, quote from Steve490. He said, they are not letting us play Slayer, so people are playing Slayer regardless of what the mode is. And this is one of the biggest complaints that I see. A lot of people just wanna play Slayer. This is for more of the casual game mode, but people just wanna like frag out, play Slayer, do whatever they want to, and they don't care that it's oddball or capture the flag or whatever, because they didn't choose that game mode. And Really, it makes a lot of sense to just have a Slayer mode. And I think that this is one of the most important things that 343 need to nail right away. Because people that can't play Slayer are pissed off and people that want to play the other modes are pissed off too because there's all these people in their games that aren't even trying for the objective. Now, the last thing that we need to talk about is actually incredibly disappointing. So we have seen a lot of complaints about skins and cosmetics and things like that. And I made a video giving 343 the benefit of the doubt. I mean, Halo Infinite, the multiplayer mode is completely free to play and I understand they need money so they want people to pay for cosmetics which I'm cool with as long as things make sense the battle pass makes sense I'm cool with paying I'm cool with paying for cosmetics that is 100% okay that being said when we buy the story mode it makes a lot of sense to me and everyone in the community that you get to unlock a lot of cool skins while playing through the campaign it's a lot of money so it only makes sense that they're going to give you armor pieces and things like that maybe even unlocking master chief's armor because we're definitely finishing his saga in this campaign so it would make a lot of sense right that we unlock a lot of things related to the story mode a lot of new skins because we're getting our price worth of the campaign in skins as well but after this leak that came out that's just not the case we get a lot of different colors we get some freaking dog tags we get some sprays we get a stance and that looks to be it now i'm not saying that this is going to stop me from playing the story mode because it's not i'm going to play the freaking story mode right away the second it launches i'm playing the entire damn thing i'm going to be playing that shit till completion however it is very frustrating their current business model when even if you buy the game and you buy the story mode for the game you whip out the checkbook and you buy it. You're not even getting a single skin? Are you kidding me? That just seems kind of freaking nuts to me. Now, at the very least, we know about this early, so we're not hoping that we unlock all these cool skins by playing the campaign only to not unlock anything. So you can kind of make the decision whether or not you want to buy it ahead of time. I'm going to be one of the ones that buy it, and a lot of people that care about the campaign are, but now you're not incentivized to buy it just because you want to get like a package deal with the campaign plus skins and you're not going to be overly disappointed when you finish this game and you don't get a single skin so definitely interesting to say the least and i want to hear your opinion about it are you pissed off that there's no skins included in the campaign do you not care i want to hear all of your opinions about this or any of the stories we have to talk about in this video do me a huge solid and smash that like and subscribe 95 percent of y'all are not subscribed so we're definitely going to need to up those numbers they're freaking rookie numbers but thank you so much for coming by i hope you enjoyed the video i really really do and yeah see you tomorrow